You should have right. been recording the whole thing. I know, I should have been, but... All right, you there, Brian? It's recording. Okay, I'm here. Okay, so just to fill everybody in, this is uh, supposed to be episode one of the podcast, but our, our loving and fantastic friend Matt, um, he has this hobby of fucking us over and uh, sleeping through everything. Um, and we had an agreement two weeks ago to finally all get together and record the first episode of the podcast uh, at 5 o'clock. And here it is 5.30, and he's sleeping. But I'd like Brian to fill fill everybody in on um, the, the most annoying part of this. The most annoying part of this is that he was awake all through the day. We played games way earlier, 8 in the morning till 11. Haven't talked since. Apparently, Adam got a text around 2.50 saying that he's going to take a nap. Now, if anyone knows Matt Kudo out there, you know that's a fucking suicide button right there. It's whatever your plan is, it's not going to happen. But he assured he assured us that he had an alarm that would wake him up at five. It didn't work. No, no, it didn't, Brian. Um, and we've been calling Matt over and over again. And Brian and I have. It's, it's actually mostly Brian. I can't take credit for your genius. <laughs> um, Brian has a hobby of when, when Matt does this, and it, it's at least once a month, um, <clears throat> going on his Facebook page and just filling it up with pictures of sleeping men and babies <laughs> and women and just people sleeping. But uh, I'm going to give Matt a call and see what he's up to. Maybe he'll answer the phone for us this time. Let's see if uh, we can get some magic happening. It's ringing. Mm-hmm. I have a good feeling this time. I don't. I have absolutely no faith. Nope. Well... I'm I'm literally it takes a lot to really make me mad. People get I upset. I can attest for that. People get upset all the time, but it takes a lot to get me like mad. And I told Brian I can like literally right now feel my blood pressure rising. Like I feel hot all over. That's how angry I am. May not sound like it. I am very mad at Matt right now. I'm very upset that we weren't recording this earlier because being able to listen to Adam's descent into madness was quite fantastic. There's a little bit of hope at first, then the worry came, mm -hmm. and then there was just flat out anger, and I could feel his veins popping over Skype. It's, yeah, it's getting I, bad. I too apologize because I should have recorded it. Um, I'm still, we didn't know. We didn't I'm, know. I'm still in a state right now that I I know it sounds stupid when I say that I, I can't believe it because it's Matt and I really shouldn't <laughs> expect anything. But literally, I can't. The fact that he sent me a text message not even three hours ago that says literally. Let me let me read it to uh, to everybody here. Um, I get a text message at two forty seven p.m. I'm taking a nap, but I set up an alarm. My response: <laughs> Oh fuck! Alarm. So you're out then? His response: It's fine. I'll wake up. And he didn't. He did not wake up. And uh, no one ever saw him Not again. at all. Now, I guarantee he'll be awake for his little movie plans tonight. Guarantee he's got a movie it. tonight. He's got to wake up around 7 o'clock to make it there on time. Mm -hmm. So we'll be pissed off around then. So I sent him a few um, few angry text messages. Um, I'll read them. I think it's fair that everyone gets to hear them. What do you think, Brian? I agree. I agree. Okay, so at 526, which is about 10 minutes ago, uh, I said, quote, you're a fucking piece of shit. Actually worse than a piece of shit because a piece of shit still serves a purpose. Two fucking weeks notice and you fuck it up. And then finally, the icing on the cake, your fucking clown shoes. <laughs> <laughs> and that really seals the deal. It does. You, you can't do anything once you've been called clown shoes. No, there, there's really nothing else that I can I can do. He He's making me so angry. I don't know if but he's I'm, doing it on purpose. Can you give Matt a quick call real quick? No. It's, it's oh, ringing. Hold okay. on. Brian's, Brian's trying. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Brian, I don't know what I'm going to do when he answers. <laughs> I really want to hear him wake up. Hello. Like he always does, because that's how he sounds. Hello. 99. 
ninety nine percent of the time because <laughs> the other ten percent of the time he's waking. He up. doesn't wake up. <laughs> Oh she God. was Gets You're so fine. mad at him. <sighs> Matt, why do you hate friendship? <laughs> You're ruining everything that this was supposed to be about. I hope your dreams are worth it. I hope you're dreaming of Wild West Matt being a cowboy riding a horse into some dusty old town where you're the hero because in real life right now, you're just hurting us. Just I so people them. know, three, four, five, six, wait, five, nine. I've called Matt 14 times in the last 36 minutes, Brian. <laughs> Let me uh, check my outgoing. I'm going to make this 15 really quick. Hang on. Let's see what Matt's up to. I've only, I only got eight. I only got eight in. This will be my last call. Yeah, he's dead. God damn it, I feel like I need to do something else. What do you want to do? Uh, no, I'm... Please leave your message. You can keep talking. I'm just going to do a little more photo, my famous Photoshop oh, action. No, yeah, you, you can keep it that, Brian. That That's always gold. I really do think that you've topped yourself with these current this current batch of uh, pictures. They're very funny. It was a good sleepy assault. I I, I think it it fit the situation perfectly. Oh, it's 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 glorious. It's It's a work of art, man. So, uh, anything else going on, bud? Well, I want to get back to Max. I'm not done yet. <laughs> um, <laughs> what makes me more angry than anything is right now, like me picturing him completely passed out in his stupid bed, all comfortable <laughs> and just unconscious. His it, stomach's hanging out. His yep. cat's probably batting at his face. Yep. He, his fucking tum tum's hanging out. It's freezing in his room because he always has 10 fans on. Mm-hmm. Um, it just it makes me so angry. So angry that he's happy and, and sleepy right now. <laughs> sleepy, happy, sleepy, Matt. <laughs> it makes me irate. I know it shouldn't, but it does. It's completely reasonable. Oh, I'm so mad, Brian. I don't get it. I don't know why I'm so upset, but oh my god, I'm upset. <laughs> because this was two fucking weeks. Oh my god. I had so much stuff planned out to talk about, man. I have like a notepad on my computer full of topics and full of I have an I had an awesome game for you and Matt to play against each other. Yeah. It was great. And I don't want to ruin it, but I don't know. I'm I'm basically done with this. No. I am. It, we've tried so many times to get this to work and it's always something. I'm always busy, you're always busy or Matt's just sleeping. I want the dream to live on, Adam. It can't it can't live on. There's no dream. It's dead. Just us, just us. Me and you, we we can do one together if you want. I have no problem doing that. Oh, oh it's my dad calling. I thought it was me. Damn it. I'll call him later. I really thought that was Matt. Let me see what he's up to. Let's see what Matt's up to real quick. <laughs> just so you know, Brian, we're not even nine minutes into this podcast. And we've done nothing but harass Matt, which is fine. I mean, that's really uh, I mean, all it's, what, it's going to be. Yeah. It's what we do. Oh, my God. All right, I'm really done with it. I'm done with that. All right. Well, some of these topics you and I, you and I can kind of just discuss here um, by ourselves. Um, so one of the things I wanted to talk about, as as some people, some of my friends know, um, I run a part time arcade mm-hmm. in, in Tallahassee, and um, we've always used it as sort of a not really a um, a way to make money, um, but it, it was more along the lines of, hey, let's rent a space. Me and my buddy Rob up here decided to rent a space, put all of our games in it, um, and basically have it as like a workshop. And 
as most people who are in the hobby know, these things take up a lot of space. They're down for a lot of the time. You got to order parts, blah blah blah. So it's not. It's usually not something that you can fix and have done in a day or two. It's usually a month or or however long, depending on the problem. Um, so we moved into Railroad Square Art Park, which is here in Tallahassee. It's kind of like a. Um, it's an art park, but it's kind of like there's a lot of like little hippie shops in it. There's thrift stores and like little coffee shops and yoga studios and stuff like that. It's always been a you know a lower budget kind of a thing, but twice a month they do big um, events like first Friday and third Saturday. They have all the food trucks come out and all the shops open up and they sell stuff. And there's a uh, it's like a performing arts center in there. They do like shows. Uh, they have bands come out sometimes. And we would open up our doors and all the machines that were working, we'd turn them on for free just to let people play them. Right. Well, we, we've been in the park for, uh, I guess, almost three years now. We had uh, Our first year, we were in a little tiny spot, and then we got a nice 1,000-square-foot spot to put all our machines in. And it's been a great success. I mean, again, we never really set out to make money. Um, but recently, there's been a lot of uh, changes in the park that really are kind of hurting us. Um, they had a big um, brewery come in. Uh, spent a lot of money renovating their building. They did a beautiful job with the building. It's gorgeous. But because of that, everyone's rent has spiked twice in the last year. They're not doing anything illegal. It's just they're, it seems as if they're trying to squeeze some of the, the lower-end people out. Um, I say uh, it's a brewery. Is it like a pub or is it just a straight-up, like, we make beer here thing? Well, the I don't want to name names because in case this ever gets out or gets big or whatever. But the, the, the brewery had a little... Um, store open in downtown where i live mm-hmm. and they grew to this new place and it's, it's actually kind of both it's a it's a full brewery and then they have like a little like uh outside part where you can go and like order beer i don't think they serve food or anything i think it's like literally just like a bar kind of a thing um but on friday saturday sunday they they open up the outside part people can come taste beers and things like that and it's great um it's just it's raising everybody else's rent which is understandable they're doing a lot of work Ooh, excuse me. They're doing a lot of work in that area as far as renovating the streets and things like that. It's yeah. just sad because a lot of I, I know personally three or four people that are moving out just because they can't keep up with the rent hikes. Um, it's always been kind of a laid back month to month thing, and now they're they want everybody to sign leases, and there's really strict rules on if you're a day late with your rent and all these different things. Um, and it's just it's 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 getting crazy for us. So long story short, we're looking for a new place, which which kind of sucks. Um, but the moral of the story, what I really wanted to talk about was um, the resurgence of, of pinball. Um, I know it's, Brian Brian's a fan of pinball. I've, I'm a fan of pinball. But it's it's crazy how popular pinball is, is once again getting. Say, so are the uh, prices like bursting upwards now? For like, for like new machines, you mean? Yeah. Well, sort of. Basically what had happened was um, for a while there's only really been one – manufacturer of pinball um and they've been kind of it since i want to say 2000 early 2000s maybe yeah uh, i know bally bally in my opinion made the best games ever they went out uh well they didn't really go out they stopped making pinball to focus more on like uh slot machines gambling machines stuff like that for for casinos and things like that um so they really stopped doing the pinball stuff in the in the early 2000s with, with pin 2k they, they stopped yeah. Um, so from from then until I think 2012, they were the only people in the game. So they really kind of set the price of games. So they went up a little bit, nothing, you know, drastic. But I think the cheapest new pinball machine when they come out, I want to say it's right around forty five hundred dollars, which it's a lot of money for a toy. But what a lot of people get confused about is even though pinball machines are toys, they're mm-hmm. actually money. They're they're revenue generating machines is what they are, you know. Um, so it's cool to collect them. It's cool to have them, but a lot of people kind of don't understand why there's so much money. Which oh, sure. a lot of the money stays in it too, right? Well, that's just it too. So the cool thing about it is you you can buy a game for two thousand dollars, a used game, and if it's a decent game, you can put it on route for a little bit, have it make some money back, and then when you're done with it, you can fix it up, clean it up, replace stuff that breaks and all that, and then resell it for close to what you have in it. You know, usually. Um, so as an example, uh, I just picked up a, a Simpsons pinball party. It was on route. It's really rough. It needs a couple things fixed on it, but I'll put a little bit of money into it, get it to run, put it on route up here for a year. It'll make you know almost what almost what I have in it probably within a year and a half, two years. And then once I'm done with that, I'll bring it to my house, play it for a couple years. If it's one I like, I'll keep it. And if it's one I don't like or I get bored with or whatever, sell it or trade it for another game and do the same thing over and over again. Um, 
but uh, it, it's a it's a great hobby. It's very frustrating at times. It just takes a lot of room. Um, but they're that's pretty a pain much what they're moving around. <laughs> they are a pain to move. They're very heavy. Um, it usually takes two people to move one without killing your back. Um, but now, without going too far off topic, um, mm-hmm. is there any like independent pinball makers? There are. There, there's a couple people, um, and that that's what's great about the resurgence of it is there's um, as far as I know, there's one company that. They've done a. Uh, they're actually in the process of making a Predator pinball machine. Um, I think it's two or three guys. I forget the name of their their company, but they they've been building a Predator and they've had it at a couple shows. Um, there's a guy named Ben Heck. He does a bunch of like video game console mods and things like that. He's making one with uh, uh, the guy's name is John Papaduke. He's the guy who did Creature from the Black Lagoon. He's a long established pinball designer. Those two guys are making one. He's made one already. It was like a uh, it's like a ghost chasing theme. I forget the name of it. Um, but then there's a uh, Chicago pinball, I think is doing uh, big Lebowski pinball. So there's more and more people that are coming up, but the, the big addition is a company called Jersey Jack pinball out of New Jersey. They, um, they basically, um, built wizard of Oz, which to this day is, is probably the most beautiful pinball machine I've ever seen. Uh, it's got, you know, full RGB color changing lights in it. It's got an LCD monitor in it, and it's overall, it's just a very pretty machine. Have you got a chance to play one yet, Brian? No, I have not. I was about to say I haven't actually even seen one in person. Yeah, I, I've got to play it at uh, three different shows now, and the first time I played it, I was just blown away by it. You know, it's completely just gorgeous. It uses uh, Bally parts, which is awesome. It's not that it's reinventing the wheel. It uses all original Bally pinball machine parts, so the flippers feel perfect. The slingshots are great. The ramps, everything's nice. Um, first time I played it though, I was just like, wow, this is absolutely incredible. This is a huge step forward with the nice LCD and everything. And the second time I played it, you know, I, the, the wow factor had kind of gone away, you know, yeah. uh, cause I had experience with it and it's a great game. You know, a lot of people don't like it. Um, I'm not really sure why. I think a lot of it is that the machine's very busy. So if you think about games like, you know, Lord of the Rings is my favorite pinball machine of all time. Same. It, but it's a very busy game. If you look at it, there's so much to do. But there's no color-changing lights. It doesn't get too crazy. Um, if you look at games like Firepower, which is one I had for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, granted, that was the 80s, so we're talking you know 30-plus years ago. Um, not a lot going on, but a very fun game. You, you had very basic objectives, very simple things to do. With Wizard of Oz, there's just so much on the play field. There, there's a, a second play field. There's a spinning house. Um, there's a lot going on, so I can easily see why a lot of older school pinball players really wouldn't get into it. A lot of a lot of people got out of pinball in the '90s when they started adding a bunch of toys. You know, T2 had the cannon and yeah, all these different things. A lot, of, a lot of people kind of got out of it because there was too many rules. And a perfect example was Lord of the Rings and Pirates of the Caribbean. And there, there's like 50 different rule sets and all these different challenges, and you can sack jackpots and all these different things, which it's, it's a lot of fun if you understand the rules. But a lot of people just don't want to have to study a player's guide to, to know how to play the game. So they just basically play it, you know. And, and the, what most people do is, hey, this thing's flashing. That's what I got to hit, or that's what I have to lock. Right. And with Wizard of Oz, it's, there's just so much going on that it's hard to do that. The other thing, too, is... And Caesar you, material. Yeah. You, you, have to, you have to look up a lot at this, the screen. And I've noticed this a lot, too, with um, some newer Sterns. Like, uh, we just picked up an X-Men for a route up here. And it tells you what you need to do, but the problem is you can't look up at the DMD a lot when you're trying to do things. You know, you're trying to not drain. You, you always can't trap the ball and look up in time. So it, it, it goes both ways. You know, I think it's a great game. I'd love to have one, but they start at like $8,000. <whistles> yeah, it's a pricey machine. Um, I know a couple operators who have them, and they don't make any money on them at all just because people walk up to it, put a dollar in it, they get oh, confused uh, by okay. it, and they're done. Um, but um, I know I know you're a big pinball fan, and I know that Lord of the Rings I think is your number one. Yeah, yeah. So what are what are some other games that you like? Of pinball, mm-hmm. I definitely like. I like Pirates of the Caribbean just for the theme, pretty much. Yeah, it's but. that's Christie's favorite machine, and I tell you, man, you know, I, I I used to at Tampa Lanes, which is a local arcade to Brian and I. They have both. They have Lord of the Rings and they have uh, Pirates, and I think what happened to me at least was Pirates always got overshadowed by Lord of the Rings, and I never gave it a fair chance. Same, exactly. I, if I went there, I went there to play Lord of the Rings, and I didn't really bother with Pirates that much. Yeah, and and now that I've taken some time and actually gone out of my way to play Pirates a couple of times. 
I'm not going to say it's better than Lord of the Rings, but it's right up there with it. it. It's such a great game, and there's really not, there's not, to me, not as much going on as in Lord of the Rings. Um, no, Lord of the Rings has you fulfilling, like, a bajillion different objectives at the same time. Mm-hmm. So you could theoretically get everything all at once, or you could just drain out and never get to see anything at all. It, it's not like little sub things. Like Pirates of the Caribbean has you do like smaller missions, mm-hmm. and it feels like you're progressing quicker. It does. Uh, that, that's a really good description of it. Um, Lord of the Rings. There, there's just the most frustrating thing about it is there's all these different things you got to stack, and then you just randomly drain, and it's so sad. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not, so. not only do you have to complete all the fucking multi balls for all the movies, mm-hmm. and then you got to go and get it straight through the ring. And mm-hmm. at Tampa Lanes, let me tell you, they don't uh, <laughs> upkeep it very well. Yeah, so. that that's the problem with that game. If the flippers aren't like perfectly strong enough, if they're even a little bit dirty, you're not going to get up that ramp into the ring. Megan and I, when it, the Balrog shot, whenever he would appear mm-hmm. and you know come out, block the ramp in the middle. Mm-hmm. Megan and I just call it suicide because yep. if it hit him, it would just like pretty much go straight down, and it was broken, so you got no points for it. Yeah. It was just a complete waste of time yep. there to kill you. Yep. Thank you, Tampa Lane. We, uh, we're lucky enough right now. We have a, a home lease only one on our shop that we're selling for a customer, mm-hmm. and even even on a brand new, pristine Lord of the Rings, that Balrog, it, it's an incredibly dangerous shot um, just because it's like you say, when, when you're hitting this plastic thing that's not perfectly flat it's not perfectly round so it's going to bounce or go or go dead or do something random you don't know what yeah, it's, it's a mystery do. um so we, we've got that and it, it's tricky because it's so tempting it's five hundred thousand points you shot sometimes and you see that thing but you've got to know that it's, it's literally a roll of the dice if you're going to drain off of it and you, yeah simpsons simpsons pinball party good Good. Simpsons Pinball Party is great, man. I, I can't wait to get mine up and running. It's We've had it in the shop before. Um, we fixed it up for the guy, and he, he had put it back on a route, and he brought it back in. A lot of stuff's broken on it, and uh, he wanted us to kind of fix it up. And I was able to buy it off of him for a, a – I think I got a pretty decent deal on it. It's still a bit of money, but um, I was able to buy it as is because we were going to have to put about you know three to $400 in parts plus our labor in it. And I said, look, I'll just pay you – what you wanted for it minus that and we worked out a deal and i got it so it's a great game without a doubt um the most complicated pinball machine ever made as far as rules go yeah um papa that's one i don't know very much about the rules yeah papa.org they put together a lot of really good videos for people like if if you want to learn rule sets or how to play the game rather than just shoot the flashing thing and most of the videos are 20 minutes long i think creature from the black lagoon is 15 20 minutes long Simpsons Pinball Party is like 45 minutes long. Oh, my God. Yeah, there's a lot of different things to do, but the game isn't super busy looking. That's what I like about it. So there's a lot of things to do, but it's not like you have 50 ramps and 50 dropped hearts. It's a very well-thought-out, well-put-together machine. Another one I never got to play, but I'm a big fan of Star Trek. I never got to play Next Generation 1. Have you? Um, I did. Um, I have more time with the the new Stern Star Trek. We had one up here. One of our collector friends in um, Niceville uh, bought one from a guy. So we went and picked that up from Orlando. Or I'm sorry, we picked it up from Plant City and brought it up here for him. And we played on it for a couple weeks. Next Generation, I didn't play one in their heyday, but um, they recently came out with a color DMD thing that they put in now. Yeah. So rather than just have the orange color or the red color, you can actually it's like a full color one. Um, and I got to play one at a show. Was it this year? It's either this year or last year in Jacksonville. And it's a great machine. It's just I'm really not into Star Trek, and even even the new game. It's a beautiful game and it's fun. Yeah. It's just I'm more of a theme pinball player. Like if I'm into the theme, I love. It's more important to you, right? But what's weird is I'm not a huge fan of Lord of the Rings, but that game is just so good. The music and everything is so great about it. I say it really pulls you in. I feel like I'm in my own world when I'm playing that game. As yeah. weird as that sounds, no, no, it's it's great. But Star Trek Next Generation is a great game. I had a lot of fun playing it as a pinball machine, but the theme just really does nothing for me. I mean, I, I can only imagine people that are really into Star Trek would love that game. Yeah, some of the, like I watched a YouTube video of someone playing it once, mm-hmm. and some of the quotes and stuff just made me laugh so hard because they're just perfect references from the show. <laughs> yeah, well, what's cool about the new one? Um, the it's based off of the movies, 
Mm -hmm. um, and they're actually having like the voice, like the the actors come in and do like new voice packages and everything. It, pinball's come a long way, man. It used to be like like even even as early, or as late as Pinball Party. That, that's from two thousand and three when we graduated high school. Yeah. Um, back then, what you'd have to do is if if a new version came out or they fixed code, you had to take the ROMs out, reburn them, and put them back in. Well, now everything's done via USB. So as an example, we our X Men we picked up, they had a code update, and the game was incomplete. Um, really not done. There was a lot of problems with it, a lot of buggy software. Well, they, they sold the game as is. It didn't sell that well. I mean, it's, it's a great game. But now that the code has come out, they did a, a, a recent code revision. Yeah. We put that code into the machine, and it's, it's like an entirely different game. And I know it sounds silly, and people may think it's weird, but the game is just so much better. The animations are silky smooth. It, everything is just a thousand times better about that game now. It's crazy how much a lot of little things like that it can add up and you know give to the overall experience. It, it's so I understand. It's unbelievable. Like one of one of the cool things they added was um, they put Deadpool in the game, and basically what you have to do is you have to get ten combos in the game, and there's a lot of different combos. You can shoot the B shot, and as it loops around, if you hit it into Xavier, that's one combo. You get Beast Xavier. So you build up ten combos, and then you can hire Deadpool and. What he does is, in, in the X-Men game, the point is to, to light the villain light. And if you make the villain shot, you can pick what villain you want to fight. And if you have Deadpool hired, he helps you take out the villain so you can get through the mode faster. Um, he also heals you, which is, you know, recovers from different things. It, it's unbelievably cool how they did everything. That's very nice. Yeah, I, I remember seeing their life bars and whatnot. So he just randomly takes away from it, or do you have to activate him somehow further? No, no once you hire him, he pretty much kind of just works for you. Um, you know, it, it'll say Deadpool helped you, and it, it's really cool when you hire him. He, he knocks on the DMD and goes, "Hello." It's <laughs> they did a really cool Hello. job with it. I mean, DMD animation it, for, for in the '90s, it was kind of. I mean, it's not the greatest, but these new stern DMD animations are unreal. They're so good. Now, uh, this is uh, one I've never played either, but mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you about it. But now that we're talking about it, here's a good time. Shaquille O'Neal. Pinball machine. Have you played that? I have. Believe it or not, I, I have played <laughs> Where did one. Where you even find that? Um, one of one of the collectors up here in Lake City had one for a while. Um, he got it. It was on route somewhere. I forget, but he he got it. You know, took it fully apart, cleaned it, um, and he had it back together. And here's the thing, man. It's not Dude, the a back game. glass to that one makes me laugh. The so. back glass is ridiculous. <laughs> it, it's like NBA Jam. Like exactly. <laughs> it's so crazy. But he had one, and here's the thing: like, it, it's not a game that I'd ever want to own. Um, but I think a lot of people dump on that game. Mm -hmm. There actually is quite a bit to do in it. Like, the the main draw is there's a basketball hoop in the center of it, and it yeah. kind of like rotates back and forth. And and the point is when the, when that mode is on, you're trying to hit the pinball up this little ramp in the center and get it into the hoop. And yeah, it's it's not the best pinball machine ever, but it, it's fun. You know, it's it's a I don't even know what they go for nowadays. Pinball prices are all over the place, but I want to say he paid like 400 bucks for it for a DMD pin, and yeah. he had a blast with it, man. He loved it. His kid loved it. You know, it's it's a solid machine. A lot of people dump on uh, Gottlieb's. Gottlieb went out of business. I want to say in late 90s, maybe or yeah. mid 90s. Um, but I've got I've got three of them, three of the premieres, and yeah, they're not the greatest, but they're they're rock solid and they're fun, man. Um, I also got to play a Space Jam, believe it or not. What? There's a Space Jam pinball? That's right. Holy <laughs> shit, boys. Ah, there's a lot. Why don't you have it already? Um, It's not very good. <laughs> uh, neither is Street Fighter. Hey, hey, hey now. Street Fighter 2 is a good game. People, people again, people rag on Gottlieb's, but uh, I think Street a lot Fighter of... Street Fighter 2 is one of the... I mean, maybe there's just personal beef between our score wars, but <laughs> that was some of the most fun I've had playing pinball. Well... Street Fighter 2, a lot of people don't like it because in pretty much all the premieres are like this. It's it's very stop and go. So when you hit an, a target, for example, you hit the Chun-Li shot or you hit Ri or whatever it is, you get like five seconds to kind of pick what you want to do next for the ball yeah. launch for the animation. And a lot of people don't like that. I mean, I get it. The theme isn't for everybody. Got leaves, a lot of people don't like him just because they're kind of pinball snobs, whatever. I, I love pinball. I'm not prejudiced. I'll play any machine. I don't care what it is. But I've got the Street Fighter 2, I've got a Mario, and I've got the Freddy. All premieres, and they're all really fun. So I'm, I'm not quite sure why people don't like them as much, unless it's just the stop-and-go play of them. I, for one, enjoyed uh, using the flipper. <laughs> Gusta flipper. <laughs> 
you still think girls can't fight? Ugh. It's so bad. I think Guile is the worst on that, though. Did Did you beat it? No, I, I've never beaten Wizard Mode on it. I've gotten into Wizard Mode, and, and basically Wizard Mode is you have to hit every um, every player's shot. Um, and, I, and I think it goes like in clockwise order. So like you start with E Honda, or who's on the left? Is it Balrog on the left? It might be Balrog on the left. You start with Balrog, go up to Dalsim, and then like work your way around. And I think Guile is the third or fourth shot. I think he's the fourth shot. And my left flipper was always kind of weak, as you remember. And I, I never, oh, yeah. I mean, you can make the guile shot, but it had to be like perfect. And I never got past guile on wizard mode. So that that game is very, very fun. But I actually, uh, my uh, my buddy down in uh, West Palm right now, I let him borrow it. So he's been one of the, one of the flippers started acting up, so we put it on its back. He took it down and cleaned it out a little bit, and has been chopping it out and playing it. Nice, nice. Yeah, he's a good dude. He, he uh, it's funny. Like he's like, yeah, this is what I fixed on it so far. He's like, is it weird if I buy stuff for it? I'm like, well, <laughs> you can buy whatever you want for. It. I'll just refund you, I guess, when I get it back. So he he cleaned out the car lane and he cleaned out you know the flippers and rebuilt one of them and everything. So so far he says it's been playing pretty good. Car functions. That's nice. <laughs> yeah, my car was always a little bit spotty on my game. That that was the equivalent of the Balrog for me. Yeah, well, I mean, it's always what, what a it lot of people. It did kill you, but uh, n- no. Once, <laughs> once you got to the car, sometimes you just uh, flipped sadly against the car, and the ball's smacking it, and nothing happened. Well, what a lot of people started doing is they started putting smaller uh, pinballs in there, yeah, to make it a little bit harder. So what what the the theory is, you have to hit it perfectly on the end of the flipper to get enough momentum to move the car back. So I haven't done that yet, but it's not a bad idea. I mean, maybe in the future yeah. I'll do that. That's what I like about it, too. You can, with pinball, just customize your own stuff as you go, like adding in the lights that you do and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, not a lot of people like the LEDs. I like them on some games. Like my, my Dracula, I have a 79 Stern Dracula. I would never put LEDs in that just because the, the light bulbs make it look older. They make it look Exactly. Dingy. I really like the looks of the older ones like that. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and like Freddy is another one that I, LEDs really wouldn't benefit it, in my opinion. Like the, the light bulbs look good for that horror theme. Um, but like Simpsons, right now it's got normal bulbs in it. I'm going to LED it because it's a cartoon. It's bright. There's a lot going on. It makes sense. Now, Creature is kind of the opposite. Even though it's a horror movie, um, I have it on route. So I had a bunch of LEDs laying around, so I put LEDs in it, mostly because they run colder. They look yeah. brighter. It, it attracts more people to it. Um, perfect example, we, we had it on route at Movies 8 up here in, in town. And they used to have a Creature way back when. So Creature was filmed maybe 30 miles from my house. Um, so they had an, an attachment to it. Now, it's perfect in a movie theater because the, the the game is about Creature from the Black Lagoon, but it's more about being in a drive-in movie theater. Um, so it, Yeah, that surprised win-win. me when I played it the first time. Yeah, so I, I brought it in fully LED'd out, and the first thing the owner of the movie theater says, he's like, oh, my God, like is this a different game? And I said, no, it's it's Creature. I just put these LEDs in it. It's brighter, and it, it attracts more people. So certain people like them, certain people don't, and I get it. It's not for everybody. I mean, every machine should not have LEDs in it. Um, like if I got a Bram Stoker's, I wouldn't put LEDs in it, but you know, yeah. South Park, I put LEDs in cause it's, it's a bright cartoon. It looks good. It makes sense. I need to go up there and see more of these pinball machines that you've gotten <laughs> since. Yeah, man. Well, come on out right now. We've got, um, I've got Mario on route at games for less up here. I have, um, creature from the black lagoons going back to movies eight. We have an X-Men at movies eight. We're putting a Earthshaker into the. I really rink liked Earthshaker too. That was a good game. Yeah, it's fun. We're we're, we're putting that into um, the skating rink up here. We're probably going to put um, roller games. We have a roller games we're trying to fix up and sell for the same guy I got Simpsons from. We're probably going to put that in the skating rink. They actually may buy that one from us because it's the roller skating theme of it. Um, Simpsons. I'm gonna once it's done, I'm gonna start looking around. But I might put that in uh, Momo's Pizza up here if they'll have it. Oh, yeah. um, South Park, it, it's kind of rough because it you can put the um, the adult ROMs in it where basically it doesn't beep out the cursing and it's got a different you know adult oriented uh, mini game on it. Uh, right now, I have the normal ROMs in it, but it depends on where it goes. If it goes into like you know a pizza place, they may not want the vulgarity of it with little kids around. Yeah, um, or so, you might want to teach the kids early. <laughs> it well, it, it's a tough game to put on route. Now, if it was in a bar, yeah, people would eat that up. So there's a Ooh, excuse me. There's a couple different places I kind of want to look into maybe putting that game. It's just, Do you feel it's, like it would be more dangerous to put a game in a bar like that? 
Well, I mean, the one thing is they can always spill beers in it. So mm. we we try right now. We don't have any in bars. We've got a couple games like in a, a pizza place, but it's like an arcade. So arcades, you know, they're, they're, they don't cost as much money. We still care for them a lot, but they don't cost as much. Um, right now, I'm building a, uh, a Ninja Turtles cab to put with my Mario pin. Um, and our games do pretty well there. We make a couple hundred bucks a month on them, um, which seemed great. But you got to remember, some of that goes to the sh- play to the store. Some of that goes to us, but then we had to pay taxes on it. So it's really, you know, it's not like we're making thousands of dollars on these things a year. Yeah. You know, you're lucky to break even with parts and time and everything like that. But bars are, are tricky because you're going to get people to put their drinks on top of it. You're going to get stuff falling on the glass. So we've, we, so far, we've kind of stayed away from stuff like that. The skating rink, if a kid puts a soda on it, yeah, it's it's a possibility. But no one really does pinball up here besides us, so we can kind of get up there once a week and check on them, see if anything's broken. If anything, you know, is messing up, they usually shut it down for us, call us, tell us what's going on. So it's it's a risk. You know, South Park's about a $2,000 game. I don't really want people dumping beers in it. but Exactly, yeah. That's why I was asking if it was uh, too spooky to send them out on in the real world. Yeah, I mean, we're we're in the process right now of, of moving our, our arcade soon, and the new place we're looking at is attached to a, a mom-and-pop video game store. Um, not the one where Mario is. It's a different one in town. Um, and ideally, we need to keep some games that work there because we're going to have the thing like five bucks an hour to get in and play. So I may put South Park up there and just put the, the kid-friendly ROMs in it, you know, that and Freddy and stuff like that. Yeah. Be a good idea. Good idea. Yeah. it's. I mean, hopefully it'll work out. You know, it's... We hate moving. We've got a lot of stuff in there. The cool thing is with us moving, it'll, it'll allow us to inventory everything and sell off some projects, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but we just... I really don't want to move, man, but I don't think it's going to work out where we are right now. It's just too much. It womps, but uh, that's life sometimes, you know. Yeah, it is. It is what it is. But we've got to we got to do something, man. We've got to stay afloat somehow. And if this right. if this other place doesn't work out for us, we're basically just going to get a big storage unit and and put everything in there. We don't really want to do that, but we've got to put stuff somewhere until we can, you know, work out a work out it's a com- shop. Completely legal to uh, live and run a business out of the storage unit, correct? Uh, I don't think so. Huh? I don't believe so. Um, the problem we're running into is we, there's a lot of great places up here, but we, you know, I hate to sound cheap, but we, we need cheap. No, you can sound cheap. We need a cheap place because we're not looking for, like, a retail place. We need, like, warehouse storage with electricity. And I know that sounds like it's easy to do, but a lot of places up here, like, you can get a warehouse, you know, a shop, but there's no electricity. Well, in order for arcades and pinball machines to run, they need electricity. Yeah. Um, and retail places, they cost a lot more money because they expect you to retail. They expect you to make money, and we just we don't really do that. Arcades are dead. You don't really make a lot of money unless you have a bar attached to it. Yeah. Um, Long term, we'd we'd love to have like a pinball bar, but Rob and I know nothing about running a bar. Pinball machines, sure, we'll fix them up, keep them clean, keep them running. Ordering and and, and handling of of a business of of beer and alcohol, not we don't know anything about it. So. If we could find an investor that knew about running a bar that needed that edge to get people in, we'd be all about it. You know, we'd easily get our machines in there and, and work night shifts and, and keep everything going. But we just we don't know enough about the bar end of it. That'd be so cool, though. That'd be, that'd be an awesome dream to achieve. It could be really fun, man. Uh, all right, so let's see what else I had on the agenda today besides hating Matt. <laughs> Um, so I know you're an avid collector of mostly Super Nintendo games. Yeah, I, I've kept, I'm keeping up on Super Nintendo games, trying to eventually get them all someday, but I still have kept everything I've had for the most part since I was younger. So big well, boost start. You, you, how many total, um, uh, NTSC Super Nintendo games are there? There's about 700. Something okay. in that area. So it's it's similar to NES then. Yeah, in, in it's, it's a little more, but okay. So it's 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 close, and I know you've got most of the. Um, I know you're a big RPG guy. You've got Earthbound. You've got Secret of Man. You have all that stuff. Yeah. Okay. So what are what are a couple of the the higher dollar ones that you're missing? I, I don't think you have Hagane, do you? I do not have Hagane. I do not have Wild Guns. Really, you don't have Wild Guns? I, I thought you had that. No, one. no, no. <sighs> Yeah, those were like oh, and Arrow Fighters. That's the fucking yeah. most expensive one. How I much is that game that up to nowadays? It was three hundred and fifty oh. last time I checked. Wow, 
Yeah. For just, um, not only that, it was a crappy, torn-up label, too. What's funny is I have all those games on Super Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Your, your friend must have got you something. <laughs> um, Loose price for Aero Fighters right now, 384 Oh, my God. For, for price charging. That is insane. I have it on Neo Geo, and it doesn't even cost <laughs> that much. There's one on Amazon for 440 right now. That's ridiculous. Oh, my God. Is that seriously right. the most, like, outside of, like... The 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 Donkey Kong competition and Star Fox competition is that the highest price Super Nintendo game? I'm almost positive. Wow, that is absolutely that's insane. That's over four hundred dollars. Yep, that's the most. Now, is it because it came out like at the end of its life? Was it a rental exclusive? Why is it so much money? It was at the very end of the life. Okay, and yeah, it was underprinted, and. Once people actually played it, they realized it was a good game. Because, you know, you've probably run into it in the arcade, at least. Well, like you said you got it on Neo Geo, too. Yeah, no, no Aero Fighters is a, special, but no, it's a I mean, good game in itself. I mean, it's a, it's a great game. I love Aero Fighters. I mean, I've played it on, on my, uh, my SD to SNES thing. You know, I play Super Nintendo games. I don't really collect for them too much. Just because that, that system sucks to collect for, man. Like, it... It and Sega Saturn, in my opinion, are the two worst consoles to collect for. Sega Saturn, yeah, I used to think like Sega CD was a lot, but Sega Saturn is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, it's insane. But Aero Fighters is a great game, but I think there's better shooters on the Super Nintendo. I think UN, Squ- UN Squadron is probably the best one. UN Squadron is absolutely my favorite one. I think that's I'd... the best shooter. I mean, I-, I know people were trying to get it to complete collections and things like that, but I just can't see paying that much money for it, man. That's crazy. So, what are some other ones that you're missing? High dollar ones besides Wild Guns and uh, Arrow Fighters. Um, Metal Warriors. Oh, great game, dude! That game was super cool. Now, that's another one that wasn't a rental exclusive, was it? I know it came out at the end of the life. That was not a rental exclusive. Really? It, yeah, it came out in 1995, so right at the end. Okay. It's not as I've seen. It's 180 loose. <sighs> that's but, a lot. Yeah. It, Compared, I was just talking to you about this the other day. Compared to three years ago, it's absolutely insane. Well, a change. lot of it, a lot of it too. You know, I love watching YouTube shows about video game stuff. A, a lot of it, in my opinion, is these these guys. They do great jobs talking about hidden gems or whatever they call it. But the problem is when they do that kind of stuff, it it makes more people want them. So the prices just skyrocket. I mean, you were with me when I found Metal Storm at our flea market for three bucks. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is what five years ago, if that. Yeah, less and, than that, I think. And that game now, even though yeah, it's not a hundred dollar game, but even now it, it's, I don't even know, is it a forty or fifty dollar game now? I think it is fifty dollars, just because so many people talk about it. Oh, it's just crazy to see how high stuff goes. And I've right started now, calling it the Game Grumps tax because if anyone talks about a game, it's done. Yeah. Three years ago, Metal Warriors. About sixty dollars, so it has tripled in price in the last three years. <sighs> that is just ridiculous, man. That is just Metal funny. Warriors was cool. It was like a side scroller mech suit game, shot things, had to navigate the map. The neat thing about it was that you could get out of your mech suit and steal other people's mech suits and things. So it was interesting at the time. It was kind of like our our little Gundam game. Yeah, it's crazy, man. Like I'm looking at Metal Storm, and, and I got it in 2009, and I guess back then it was a $20 game. I, it was in that random magical bucket he would bring in every week of new stuff. J&W, for nobody that knows, because nobody knows J&W, was our legendary hiding hole for all video game paraphernalia. No, every week, somehow, he found another Tupperware thing full of video games, would bring them in, and we'd just rifle through it like children on Christmas. It, it, it was... It was magical, man. Like I've got, I've just passed 500 NES carts, and I'm not even exaggerating. At least half of them are from that place. And I, it was, we would go there pretty much every week, and you just grab ten because they're yeah, so cheap. We would go there every week, built up a rapport with the guy, I'd go in with twenty bucks, and walk out with ten games. And like nowadays, you, you might walk out with two. Um, and I got a lot of really good stuff from that guy outside of games. I got a Virtual Boy that worked for twenty bucks. I got a Neo Geo, or not a Neo Geo, yeah, right. I got a, a Turbo Graphics <laughs> for five bucks. Um, I got a, a Vader Atari 2600, a Heavy Sixer 2600. Um, very, I got my top loader for 20 bucks from the guy, my, my NES. 
Um, yeah. the, and the guy would just, he would, every week he'd bring in a plastic tote of stuff. He's like, oh, I found this in the attic. Oh, I found this. Recently, um, Brian will attest to this, he, he comes in with complete inbox, like mint Super Nintendo games. Where does that come from? Like not, Where? not, and not like Mad ninety eight, like legit RPGs. No, one day, yeah, we walked in there and there's just a box, complete copy of Final Fantasy three, Chrono Trigger. No, Alden's hang on, Quest. we have to explain to everybody the Chrono Trigger joke. Box Chrono Trigger joke <laughs> is. It's a stupid running thing where we go around and every crappy shop that we see or usually, you know, a little sale outside, garage sale, we go, oh, 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 oh box crunch trigger, I saw it. Let's go back for it. Let's go back for it. Probably find it for $5. This guy, J&W, just pulls up one day, box crunch trigger. We just shit ourselves laughing pretty much. Yeah, we, we really didn't... Um... We really didn't know what to do, so we had to change the joke to Box Earthbound. I, do you know what the price for a complete Chrono Trigger is right now? And I want you to remember he was selling it for less than sixty. I got it. I no, I missed out on that one. It was forty dollars there. Okay, and that was you, you're not talking loose. You're talking complete in box. Complete in box with everything. Okay, so how long ago was that? Like two years ago. Uh, yes. Okay, he wanted forty four, which I'm assuming is low because I think. When I got you the cart, I think I paid thirty five for it, and that was like a couple of years ago. Yeah, and that was that was still lower than the norm. Okay, so I, I'd say back then a loose copy was about sixty. So already, oh wow, when I got it for thirty five, yeah, oh wow, um, already we were on top of the game. Um, but... complete in box. Did it did it have like maps and stuff too, or was it just like mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. Um, I'll say seventy five bucks. It's it's two hundred dollars now. Oh my god, what what is wrong with the world? Like I get it, but I don't get it. Like <laughs> it's funny because RPGs have always been you know the the higher bit of Super Nintendo. You got the most bang for your buck, especially if you're into it. You play a game for sixty hours, it's sixty dollars. That's reasonable. Mm-hmm. But so they. Crown Trigger's been fifty loose and it's only recently gotten up close to a hundred. It's like eighty, ninety. That's just insane. So that stayed about the same. That's you might that's close enough to going out and buying a new game right now. But like yeah. you know, Wild Guns, where that game is honestly like you could beat it in like half an hour to an hour. It's very short, very short. You're looking at 200 loose now when a couple years ago it was 50. And if you look even further back in the dawn before, you know, YouTube, it was $30. I'm looking at at Metal Storm right now. Mm -hmm. They're selling, like, a copy sold two days ago. 75 bucks. God damn. Like, that's a very good point that you call it the Game Grumps tax. $95 $95 on July 20th for There's definitely one. like um Wild Guns definitely shot up after Mike Matei on uh Cinemassacre did a video about like Super Nintendo games. That one shot up because oh, everyone's God. like, "Hey, what's Wild Guns?" Whoa. I remember there was um for a while and it's the only one game that I I could not let go of when when we did our Nintendo for Super Nintendo trade mm-hmm. was Boogerman on Super Nintendo. I don't know why it's so much more rare or uncommon, whatever you call it, for Super Nintendo. Um, but do you know why that game is so much more expensive on Super Nintendo than Sega? That one, I have no idea. That That is a mystery to me. Like, I'm not sure if they just made fewer of them or if it was like... It wasn't at the end of the run, I don't think. I mean, it's a great game. Um, but it's like a $30 game now on Super Nintendo. And I don't know why, where it's like 10 bucks on freaking Genesis. Super Nintendo tax. That's another thing. Is like Sega Genesis for some reason is just you know when you have your opinions about the console wars no matter what, but price wise nowadays Sega Genesis always bites it. You can get it yeah an I entire mean, collection for way cheaper. There, there's an exception to the rule. I know like Musha is pretty expensive, and I know a couple of those like shoot 'em ups are are fairly expensive. But overall, Super Nintendo has so many damn games that are expensive. That's why, like, for a while there, I was getting pretty nuts with, with collecting. I was trying to collect everything. I wanted Super Nintendo, and I wanted Saturn, and I wanted Nintendo. And it got to a point, like, 
at 500 games, I've got most of the cheap NES games. But, like, some of the games I need are, like, four and $500. Now, granted, I'm never going to pay that for it. I can't do that, man. Like, I have pinball machines that I haven't paid $500 for. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I'm, and I can't see paying 500 bucks for any Nintendo game. You know, obviously, World Champ Kart is excluded from that. But games like Little Samson, you know, I've played it before, and it's a great game. It's it's awesome. But $500, man, I can't. That's more than a PlayStation 4. <laughs> exactly. That's, yeah. like, insane. What the hell is that? I don't know. I mean, again, there's just so many good games out there, but it's to a point now. Like you know, most of the games yeah, I need are fifty dollars more. It boils down to it's a you know side score platformer, and you can change your character on the fly. But is that worth five hundred dollars? I really don't think so. You could say Bubble Bath Babes is worth that much because it's a weird novelty to have. So I just looked at it, and Little Samson right now. Is in 2008, it was 55 bucks. Okay. Okay, which at the time was a lot of money for a Nintendo for a game. Nintendo game, yeah. Right? It is now $610. <laughs> so in seven years, it's jumped up that much. That is crazy. That I'm is curious. absolutely. We, we need to actually just do a freaking little research on this. And see when the rise of like these video reviewers started coming out and the price jump difference. I know it's obviously directly correlated, but I'd like to see how much. Here, here's another example: uh, Flintstone, Surprise of Dinosaur Peaks, a Nintendo game, it's a Tato game, a late release. Um, it hasn't. I don't think it's been confirmed, but it's pretty much everyone agrees that it was a blockbuster exclusive rental, kind of like Hagane was. Yeah. And in 2008. It was a two hundred dollar game, which it, it was always an expensive game because of the rarity of it. Yeah, six hundred and fifty dollars now. So right there are two games that I'm at twelve hundred plus dollars for that. Whew! Can't do it. <sighs> I'd, I'd have to sell one of my or, uh, one of my candy caps for it. I can't do that. You'd have to sell your testicle for it. Because <laughs> you're not I can't. It. I can't. Justify I can't do that. that man. Man. So so what, back, back to to your collecting. What else? Are you in need of besides those big guns? The other bigger ones, um, Evo was a game I played. Yeah, it's a fun game. Fighting game tournament, but <laughs> no, I the dinosaur the game. Crap right? out of that! I used to rent that almost every week back in the day during summer. I had so much fun with that. That's the dinosaur one, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That one jumped up a lot. Mega Man X three and seven. For some reason, are a lot. I don't know why I have three. Maybe that was just towards the end again. Well, that and I think also it's Mega Man. Yeah. Well, yeah. Any, any, like even Mega Man X. Have you seen how much that's gone up, dude? No. That game's like dirt common too. Yeah, that game. I remember I got a J and W for five bucks, and now let me look at it here. Mega Man. Where the heck is it? Mega Man X Super Nintendo. It's like a thirty dollar game now. <laughs> That's crazy. That is also the other problem is like there's the dirt cheap sports games and you used to be able to get you know a dirt cheap game for five bucks. Now even like the dirt cheap games have jumped up to twelve, fifteen bucks. Yeah, it's crazy. That's why I, I usually call Brian when I'm at a you know random game store. I travel a lot for work, so I usually Google them and if I can find even if it's like, you know, I don't even know some random college basketball game. I'll see if he wants it because usually you can find them for three and four bucks. There's a great store in Ocala. I forget the name of it, uh, Gamers Edge or something like that. They always have um, games for for two and three bucks. And I, I found a couple of games I didn't have. They had like Gold Two for five bucks, which is not rare by any means, but it's one that you don't see a lot. Yeah. So I think that's like a ten dollar game. I paid five bucks for it. Um, I actually forgot to send you this picture I have, Brian. There was a really funny. Um, I went into Gamer's Edge last time I was through Ocala, mm-hmm. and I was looking at, I can't remember the name, I think it was Super Scope game. They had like 20 Super Scope 6s all next to each other on the shelf. <laughs> so I took a picture of it and meant to send it to you, but I never did. <laughs> Brian, do you need a uh, Super Scope? <laughs> so what else are you looking for? I have Ogre Battle. That was nice. a, definitely a rare one. I have Sparkster. I didn't know this one was as rare as it was. Is it? Seventy dollars loose. Wow, 
I had no idea that that was a uh, hidden gold. That's worth a lot more than the freaking RPGs for the most part. Hmm. You also have uh, Super Adventure Island too, because your friend. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> um, as much the expensive ones are the end of the run ones, and by then, I pretty much moved on to PlayStation. Yeah, that that's what happened to everybody, man. That's why the, these games for Nintendo are so expensive. Their end of life Super Nintendo is out. There, there's equal versions on Super Nintendo that obviously were better. Yeah. Like Final Fight 3. Oh my god, why is it so expensive? So expensive, about $100, don't have. <laughs> Jesus. Super Turrican 2. Yeah. Super Turrican, while we're on the subject, is an awesome game. Mm-hmm. If nobody's ever played it, Super Nintendo, pick it up, very cheap. Yeah. Super Turrican 2, however, is over $100 and wow. ridiculous. Final Fight Guy. That was a rental exclusive, wasn't it? I don't know. I don't know. I want to say it was. Um, Dracula X, Ninja Gaiden Trilogy, Harvest Moon. That's another one. Harvest Moon is a good example of a rare game that isn't rare at all. Mm -hmm. It's just people don't want to get rid of it. Well, that's the same thing with friggin' Earthbound, man. Like when people say Earthbound is rare, I I laugh at them. I'm like, no, it is not friggin' rare at all. It's not rare. Nah. Earthbound is also an example of what I was talking about earlier, where in the last seven years, it's only doubled in price loose. Oh, it's so crazy to me, man. But, I mean, in the last three years, it's pretty much stayed the same, as opposed to, like, Hagane, for whatever I mean, people found out about it, which I'm kicking myself in the anus for, because I definitely remember playing that, renting it before. The only game, and this is a shady, this is a shady little Brian secret that no one else knows about, so I'm revealing it here first. Back in the day, I really wanted Breath of Fire 2. Went mm-hmm. to a million different game stores. My dad drove me easily, like, you know, 60 miles, like, freaking forever away just looking for this. Could not find it in any store. We had it at the 54 Blockbuster, mm-hmm. so... We rented it, and I lost it on accident. Oh, no. Oh, no. So I just paid the price of it and got to keep it. Nice. And that's how I got Breath of Fire 2. Cool. I have it on uh, Game Boy Advance, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe that's the first one I can't remember. Man, I'll tell you, when when the GameCube had the Game Boy Player come out for Game Boy Advance games, I was like, this is the greatest day ever. Seriously. Not only did you get an extra inch on your GameCube, which is pretty sweet. (laughs) Well, but yeah, being able to play like the updated Super Nintendo games pretty much on there. I mean, first awesome. off, who who doesn't want an extra inch? You need that extra inch. Everyone needs an extra inch. And then second off, if you like place you said, a normal GameCube next to it, the the normal one just shrivels away. Women will hard. laugh at it without that extra inch. They giggle. Yeah, they they point, stare, giggle, and walk away from you, and go to the one with the extra inch. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a fact. Yeah, fact. Um. But yeah, man. Like I think I've got like Yoshi's Island. I've got uh, Breath of Fire one and two. Um, oh, I forget that one game I just picked up again. I saw it from an online reviewer. It's like a uh, shoot 'em up slash RPG. Uh, something Star. I know what game you're talking about. I can't think I can't of the name, the name of, it, of it though. But I found it like on eBay. Oddly enough, complete in box for like seven bucks with free shipping. I was like, okay. And man, my GameCube, even though it's kind of you know. In its heyday, that's all we use for Melee. Sigma Star Saga. That's there cool. it is, yeah. I, I've been playing nothing but Game Boy Advance games on it, man. It's such a cool freaking piece of hardware to have. Yeah, I remember like pissing myself being able to play the Castlevania games, like the yeah, Metroidvania man. ones on there. Yeah, they, God, Game Boy Advance had some really good Castlevania games. I, I think part of my problem with it, it's that's another console that's getting really expensive to collect for. Um, it's just I didn't really like the Game Boy Advance just because by the time I got into it, you know the DS had come out, and that's when I started buying the Game Boy Advance games. Just because mm-hmm. it's, I have beef hands, and it's hard for me to hold small things like that. Like I even have a hard time going back and playing Nintendo games now, just because my hands are so beefy. Um, and it wasn't backlit when it first came out, and I'm like, this is stupid, blah blah blah. But now th- these games are amazing, and even though it's a little expensive, it's so much cheaper to pick those copies up than friggin' Super Nintendo copies. Yeah, I mean, you can get you know like Super Mario Brothers two on Game Boy Advance and listen to Toad's horrible voice. <laughs> I think I think I actually have that, and like I remember you telling me that when I picked it up, and I instantly went in and it's like, 
awful. It's horrible. It's <laughs> Every it's time terrible. he jumps, I think. Yeah. It's... <laughs> <laughs> it's like crows attacking. It's me. seriously like earthworm Jim crows constantly. <laughs> it's so annoying. I don't know why they were thinking that's a good idea. Oh man, do you remember having? Did you have Game Boy? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. One? yeah. Do you remember having to buy like the giant flashlight attachment with like the magnifying glass? For I can, it? I can do you one better. I got for Christmas. If you remember, Radio Shack sold their own version of. I don't even know what the hell they called it. It, it was like this... I don't want to call it an accessory because it was like five times the size of the Game Boy. But basically, <laughs> you could plug this thing into the wall. It came with like a 10-foot cord. The Game Boy would fit inside of it. And basically what it would do is it had a magnifying glass okay. that would like fold over the top of it. It had a light in the magnifying glass. It had speakers that you would plug this little thing into the bottom of the Game Boy. And then on the bottom of it, it had like a little door. And you could put like... I want to say like three or four games in it to like for storage. <laughs> yes. But the thing is, like the Game Boy is supposed to be portable. This thing was like carrying around a shoebox. <laughs> sounds box. like you're taking was, a suitcase. Seriously, it, it was like a shoebox that would play Game Boy games at that point. It was ridiculous. <laughs> well, at least you didn't have any problem with your B fans. No, it, it actually fit my my young Adam B fans quite well. Oh, that was <laughs> that was the other thing. It had this little thing that would fit over the front of it, so it would give you an arcade style joystick. Oh god! Oh, the those are and it was horrible. terrible. Oh shit! So bad. What was your uh, what's your favorite Game Boy memory while we're talking about it? Um, what's weird is I was actually thinking about this the other day. So there's a lot of great games for original Game Boy. There was a video recently where they showed Game Boys to like current kids, and they they yeah. laughed at it because they all have freaking iPhones and iPads and everything. But I remember, I don't remember why I was sick, but I remember being really sick when I was younger. And my brother had a Game Boy. And like, this was, like, in its heyday. Yeah. Um, and he stopped playing it or whatever. So I wound up, like, giving him, like, ten of my allowances for it or whatever. And I remember <laughs> it came with, like, you know, it came with Mario. It came with Tetris. Um, but I remember the one game that's still very fun to this day was Bases Loaded for oh, the original God. Game Boy. That game, like, I'm not a huge sports fan, um, especially baseball. I hate baseball. But that game for original Game Boy is so good, and it's like a dollar if you don't have it. It's so fun. My greatest Game Boy dream or memory, really. Um, once my father decided to take me out camping, mm -hmm. we went with uh, another person he worked with and his son and daughter. We all went camping, and I took my Game Boy and Final Fantasy Adventure 3, which I was playing at the time. Mm-hmm. And fun fact about Final Fantasy Adventure, Final Fantasy on Game Boy is actually just the Saga series, but no one knew the Saga series in America, so they renamed them to the more popular Final Fantasy. Sure. Another another one of those renaming freak-out things. Freaky. Anyway, um, Dave Wadsworth was the, the, dad, the other dad's name. I remember that for whatever reason. And we went camping. And the first day was fine, and the second day it was like this torrential hurricane pretty much came through. Eesh. It blew away one of the person's tents. There's actually a third party. Their tent got blown away. Ours had a hole in it; it was leaking. So we all went into like his RV, and I just stayed up playing this Game Boy because I was un unable to sleep because it's like <laughs> all night. Mm -hmm. Everything was horrifying. There's actually like trees falling down around us. Jesus. It was like I don't I don't know why we didn't go. I, obviously, we wanted to die. <laughs> right. So, I'm up all night playing this thing, and you can't see anything. No, at all. So I had this little shitty flashlight <laughs> that I stuck on my shoulder and pointed it down at the screen. Ugh. And I, I can still remember seeing everything perfectly. That's crazy. That, that was the saving grace of the trip. Dude, that, that, that is one of my other favorite things. I remember going on a road trip somewhere. God, I hated that when I was a kid. Um, but I remember, like, waking up and we were already driving or whatever. But mm -hmm. the daylight was the greatest thing ever for Game Boy. Cause you could just, <laughs> it like, was heaven. You could kind of, like, tilt it a little bit sideways one way and, like, see everything so, like, crisp. <laughs> nothing Nothing ever did. Oh, now, speaking so about daylight, too, it made me remember that uh, Game Boy Advance game. Do you remember Boktai, Boktai was that? No, I don't it remember was, that one. It was actually solar-powered. Huh. Like, you got your guy had a solar-powered gun in the game, mm -hmm. 
and if you played it outside, it would charge the gun's battery. Wow. That's actually yeah. pretty neat. Yeah, yeah. But it how, was a how cool did game. it work? It was cool. How did it work at night, though? You couldn't play it? I don't remember. I don't remember. I mean, it's I a just... cool idea, but I... hopefully they have backup for that. <laughs> Did it have like a save state? So like if you could go outside and okay, charge it no, during the day. I just look at it. It is Boktai, and the subtitle is "The Sun Is in Your Hand." Huh? If the player's gun runs out of light reserves and there's no sunlight available, then the player must avoid enemies. Oh my god! <laughs> That's neat, but man, you're, would you're I be a upset? You're a vampire hunter, so that, and I mean, <laughs> and also strangely enough, you're a vampire hunter in a Konami game. Huh? That is weird. <laughs> very, very. very strange. <laughs> oh, that's cool, man. It got been... really fucking good reviews when it came out. How much is that game? Seventy five hundred dollars. <laughs> I think you have to take out several loans for it. I mean... <laughs> That's ridiculous, man. <laughs> That's just absolute insanity. Yeah, some of the games like that I need that are somewhat affordable. I need RC Pro Am Two is one I never got to play. I need Bucky O'Hare. I need Panic Restaurant, which is like two hundred and fifty dollars now. Uh, um, I rem- That's one I've never gotten to play. It hypnotized me back when I used to read about it in Nintendo Power. For whatever reason, the idea of being a chef flying around in a frying pan for the last level throwing eggs. It's as a, retarded as that sounds, it seduced my young brain into always remembering it. It's a great game, man. I remember renting it from far more. Um, when, when Super Nintendo and Sega first came out, I didn't get it right away. Um, and then I wound up getting a Sega long before I got a Super Nintendo. But I remember going to far more and seeing Panic Restaurant and renting it and... Another thing too, I remember renting from there's Action Fifty Two. I don't know if you remember that. I one. never, I never played that in the wild. Farmore had it, and my dad rented it for me. He's like, "Oh, look, you get all these different games on it." And that, when you're a kid, you're like, "Oh my god, this is amazing! I have so many different games." Mm-hmm. Even back then, disappointed. <laughs> like I was like, "Oh <laughs> back then, was man, bad. yeah, it's pretty terrible." Um, I'm trying to think what else. There's a lot of pricey ones I don't have. I don't have um, what is it? Cowboy Kid or something like that. Kid Cowboy, something like that I don't have. I <laughs> need uh, Battletoads Double Dragon is a game I don't have. Um, obviously, Little Samson. I don't have Contra Force. I don't have. Uh, there's a bunch of games I don't have. Like I think I think that's actually like, one I remember renting Contra Force. Yeah, I still think I need like 250 plus games or something like that. But it, it's getting to a point now where like when I go to a shop, like I don't even know what I have anymore. Like I got if I don't have my phone with me, I don't buy stuff because I've bought games that I have, I've I've bought the same game four or five times. Thinking that I it's, didn't it's have happened it. to me too. So yeah, it's bad. it's crazy, but <sighs> it is what it is. Are you ready to be slightly disgusted? Yeah, Run Saber. You know That's, that on Super Nintendo. Yeah, I think I paid seven dollars for that, and I I definitely got it for less than ten dollars. Mm-hmm. I got it several years back. Right. Looking on price charting real quick. Back in uh, we'll say January of oh eight. Mm-hmm. Loose two seventy. Mm-hmm. Currently, forty three eighty five. Why? We I want just you to got think, that game this year for like ten bucks at J and W. I want you to think about if you were back in two thousand eight and bought like a hundred copies of this <laughs> fucking common as dirt game. Yeah. And you could have four grand right there. Oh, that's just ridiculous, man. It like looking at this, it jumped from. I mean, there's natural inflation. Sure. In January two thousand twelve, about eleven dollars. Wow. In July, for some reason, it jumped up to forty-one of this year. No, July of two thousand twelve. Like just, so, just like six months halfway through the year, it jumped up. So I'm wondering if there was like a popular reviewer that there released the video. There absolutely had to be. There's no other reason for that. Man. No. That's crazy. But it's not like everyone on Earth. Oh, I gotta get Run Saber. No, that's insanity. I don't know, man. So, what do you think the next big thing is going to be? So, obviously, the next. Big thing to collect for is going to be PlayStation 2. Because PlayStation 1, there's some stupid games that are expensive. But PlayStation 2, GameCube era type games, what do you think is going to skyrocket? Obviously, the RPGs are going to. We know that. Mario games. That's It's a funny thing that you mentioned that. A lot of things for PlayStation 2, if it's not a weird, obscure thing, mm-hmm. actually has gone down a lot. Like hmm. Final Fantasy X is a good example because it's been re-released. Well, that's true, too. Yeah. So, so what what games haven't really been re released? Like I know for a while, Eco and Shadow of the Colossus were kind of expensive, but the re release killed those prices. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're the RPG. Ones that person. haven't been re released for PlayStation Two that are really expensive are the Dot Hack games. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's true. I th- especially the Dot Hack Quarantine, the the mm-hmm. f- 
Uh, ah, there was one that was a trilogy, and then there was one that was a quadrilogy. And this was the last game of the quadrilogy. Even loose, though, that's $100. That's crazy. But, yeah, I mean, that's a, that's as expensive as you get. Like, 10 games down from that, you're looking at 50 bucks. Don't Don't you and Matt have all those games? I have the trilogy, the second ones that were released, and Matt has the first four. Oh, okay. I remember because when you put them all together, it makes like that picture or whatever. Yeah. That's nuts. So what about things like um, our favorite game, Graffiti Kingdom? How much is that game worth now? <laughs> that that game, game really needs to come back out again. That game is amazing. Let me see if I can look it up. It was Graffiti Kingdom, right? Yeah. I'm there, too. Let's see if you can... Eh, 16 bucks. It's starting to go up. I think we paid, what, 5 for it at Toys R Us or something like that? Yeah. Who made that game? I don't even remember. But so many games now, the the problem back then with Super Nintendo and stuff, the production. Yeah. Now it's just, you know, they flopped out 14 million discs and just whatever they didn't get, they just tried to destroy. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I'm trying to think what else was like really good in that era. I know like things like Cubivore. That I think for a while that was kind of an expensive game. I don't know if it is anymore. I really stopped looking at all these anything past Nintendo. I just don't do it anymore. Um, Cubivore for a while was like a thirty-five, forty-dollar game. I don't know what it is anymore. I have no idea. I know Icaruga. also another like difference. PlayStation Two, according to the price charting, has gone down just in general. Since 2008, it's gone down like three dollars, just as a flat price for everything. Well, maybe, maybe like now's the time to get into that one then. Yeah, since everything's going down, because everything else is going up, man. PlayStation One is kind of stagnated. Yeah, it's it's gone down from what it was. Well, a lot of those, a lot of those RPGs were re-released on PSN. Like, exactly, that fucking slaughtered things. Like Xeno Gears was close. It was like eighty dollars to a hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. And then it came out, and now it's like a 20 buck game again. Wow. That sucks for collectors, man. Yeah. Sui Code 2 has never been re released, so even lo- just the disc is 110 bucks. Ah, dude, you have that one, don't you? Yeah. That's insanity, man. Another funny one that nobody liked the fucking game when it came out. It even got a re release, but it's still just skyrocketed as the first Persona game. Hmm. Or mate, no, no. It's it's actually gone down. That was the first PlayStation RPG I ever had. Mm -hmm. And even back in 2007, it was loose for $100, and now it's $60. So it's just uh, must be a small printed game. That's crazy, man. That's just insanity. Oh, by the way, you you got a second. uh, Did you you see the picture on Matt's Facebook? No, but I... (laughs) The funny thing is, we, we've been recording for an hour and fifteen minutes. I know this is what I'm I'm waiting for this uh, last eighteen minutes to see what happens to Matt and and nothing. Um, let me go to Matt's page. <laughs> uh, little, I love Photoshop magic. I love your photoshops. They're so good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so good. My a weird game that I want to get for Game Boy Advance is the Tactics Ogre game on there. It's kind of expensive. Didn't you get the, it for um, PSP or something like that? Or is that a different it, Ogre game? <laughs> there's too many Ogre games running around this place. <laughs> no, I, I thought you got a Ogre Tactics Bath- Ogre game. Oh, that's what it was. What's up? I thought I thought you got a Tactics Ogre game I did, for PSP. I did. Okay. I was I was going to start explaining. They had a uh, Tactics Ogre on PlayStation 1 mm-hmm. and just normal Ogre Battle. Then they had a Tactics Ogre on Game Boy Advance, and then they had they re-released, they like remade the graphics and stuff for the most part of Tactics Ogre and put it on PSP. The problem with Game Boy Advance, as I'm, you might have come across it, I definitely have in several instances, is that there are so many copied games and like bootleg versions. Yeah. So I'm afraid of buying anything on there. Even you go to that's where I last got screwed. I mean, they don't sell them there anymore, but GameStop, 
I bought Pokemon Emerald, and it turned out to be a bootleg one. I remember that. It had that weird label on it. Yep, yep, yep. What yeah. the hell was it? Oh, the manual also had, uh, it was only 17 pages. It just, like, stopped. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> what uh, what, what was that mishap that we had at J&W that one time with Game Boy Advance games? Didn't you buy, or was it Game Holy Boy? Holy shit. It was, it was Game, Game Boy, Boy Color. Oh, okay. <laughs> this, is, this is a really weird mishap. Was I went in there, and I loved the Nintendo game Crystallis. It was an action RPG. I enjoyed it greatly. It's, it's still worth playing if you're into that stuff. Right. They, as they do, because, you know, games have no original ideas, they remade the game on Game Boy Color, which, actually, back then, I mean, it, it was pretty much a step down in graphics mm-hmm. and story. But it was, I heard that it had a different story and added things to it, so I wanted to try it out. Saw it for, like, 2 $3, was it, and picked it out of this bin of games. Take it home, want to go test if it works. Slap it on in, turn it on, and ding, you know, start up and boop, mission impossible. <laughs> I looked at the label again, it's clearly Crystallis, and <laughs> I'm just sitting there confused as fuck. So I, you know, piece it together. Somebody switched the boards on the inside yeah. for whatever fucking reason. I don't know to this day. We go back to J&W. I just, on a hunch, just a lust for this game. We're just looking through these Game Boy Color games. There's Mission Impossible. So I was, what the fu- why the fuck not? Maybe they all came from the same place. Mm-hmm. I bought it. Crystallis. Oh, I remember how <laughs> frantically we went back to JNW instantly. Because we, we, we would never bring handhelds with us. We would just buy the games because they were always good. Like I don't think I bought anything from him that didn't work. No, it's always been always been golden. Guys treated us good. Yeah, and I mean, like, I remember just like I, I laughed at you at first. Like, I felt bad, but <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. And that's not even the, the last thing that happened with. Mm-mm. Do you remember the other one? Mm-mm. Sega Genesis game. Uh, uh, what the hell was the name of the place? Maybe you'll remember as I tell the story. We went far away. We went like forty minutes away to this place, mm-hmm. and plane trade, plane trade. Okay, I don't remember what happened, though. I don't remember this. Okay, so we're looking through everything. I get some cool stuff. I got Star Gladiator for the first appearance of Hayato, mm-hmm. which was cool to me. I think that was the day also that you got fucking Rugrats on PlayStation 1. Oh, oh I do remember that now. Okay. I remember okay. this now. So um, we're looking through all these really cheap games, and some are cool. I see Blaster Master 2 for Sega Genesis. I'm like, okay, I've never even seen this in person, let alone play it. And it was very affordable. It was like twelve bucks. It had you know, the box. Just grab the box, go up there, buy it. We're driving home, halfway home. I look in there. It's fucking Game Genie. For some, <laughs> for some <laughs> it still had the Blaster Master Two manual, and it even more oh, confusing. My God, why did you not look in the box? I don't know. <laughs> I, it was in the box. Why yeah. would they lie to me? Yeah. There's, there's like a sticker sealing the box too, so I was like, okay, I'm, I'm not even gonna fuck with this. Uh, Obviously, these guys are adults; they know what they're doing. Oh, uh, so ridiculous! <laughs> Did anything like that ever happen to you? Um, I don't think in like a retail store. There's been times when I've bought stuff on eBay, to like complete in box, and I get it. And I think one time I, I bought like when I was going through my 64 kick again. I like like every other little kid, I sold all my stuff to get the next big thing. Yeah. Um. And I ordered, I think I ordered a lot. It was like Mario Kart, Mario 64, Wave Race, and maybe Golden. I can't remember what it was. But anyways, I remember get, like the package came in, and I, w- I opened it up, and all the games were complete in box. Uh, Mario Kart was right. Mario 64 was right. But Golden Eye, when I opened it, it was freaking Diddy Kong Racing. <laughs> and I was like, well, I mean, technically this game's worth a little bit more, but I really wanted to play Golden Eye at the time. <laughs> um, and it was an That's awesome That's exactly state. what we did. We... After I saw I got Game Genie, we went home and looked at the price. And I, okay, it's even, but I really just wanted mm-hmm. to play Blaster Master. Yeah. But I'm trying to think. Um, I don't think anything has happened to me like in a re- Oh, actually, you know what? I'm lying to you. <laughs> this actually just ha- I can't believe I forgot about this. Um, local mom and pop shop. Um, I went there, and they have, like, once a month they do, like, half off used games or something, or 25% or something like that. So there was, like, there was, like, five... Uh, $3 games that I didn't have 
you know. So I go there, and I, I, I one of them was like, um, I didn't have Astyanax or Astyanax, however the hell you say that. I didn't have um, like roller games or just like a bunch of crappy ones or whatever. Well, one of the games I asked for, like they have like this this place probably has like 500, 600 Nintendo games on it, so they're like in a big stack, and you got to tell the person, okay, I want it's in this row, and it's the tenth game down. Yeah, and I go in there, and they kind of pull the the game out for you. Well, I, I could have sworn I saw him pull out the game I needed. But I guess he grabbed the second copy of Astyanax on, abs- on accident. That's hard to say. <laughs> Astyanax on accident. Astyanax um, accident. <laughs> so anyways, um, I pay for all the games. They had already bagged them up. I get home, and I'm going through them all to put them on my list and clean them. And I'm like, why the hell do I have two Astyanaxes? This is ridiculous. I, I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't want two. I was supposed to get Road Blasters, but they didn't put it in there. So I just called them back, and they swapped it out the next day. But still, yeah, that, it happens from time to time. But I think that's the funniest thing that's ever happened. I, I bought, um, I remember one time I, it was at a, a local game store. I don't, not, not local to me, but local at the time. Don't want to say, don't want to name names, but mm-hmm. I paid for five games and came home with six. And the sixth game was a little game called Tecmo Super Bowl. Do you remember that event? Uh huh. Uh huh. Um, I'm like, uh, I don't remember asking about this. What had happened was we went in there and the guy knew that we bought a lot of games. He's like, oh, look, we just came in. And it was a nice copy of Tecmo Super Bowl. I'm like, oh, well, I already have that. I didn't. I had Tecmo Bowl. I thought I had Tecmo Super Bowl. So he had put it on the counter. Well, when I went up with my five games, he had put it on top of Tecmo Super Bowl, not thinking, and put them all in there. And I'm like, well, should I tell him? And, of course, younger dirtbag Adam said, no, free game. <laughs> so, but it is what it is. And that's why he's addicted to meth now. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe I'm the sole reason. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's you. So. That place, man, you you got to you got to pay attention to what the price tags are because when they ring you up, and again, we're not going to name names, but when they ring you up, it's you could have $10 exactly in items and in Florida, what is it, 7 and a half cents? Yeah. So, you know, what is that? 10 1072 roughly you're going to pay. Mm-hmm. You'd go to pay and it would be like, "Okay, that's going to be 10.97." And you're like, "What?" It or, has become completely random, and I don't know what kind of calculator she uses, <laughs> but it's definitely it's gotta have it's got to have low batteries or something in it. Like it doesn't make any sense how like, random the numbers are. <laughs> she just doesn't <laughs> understand the difference between plus and time. Or maybe maybe it's solar powered, and she's doing it at night or something. And <laughs> she she needs to get out there. She does. She needs to go store she up needs... her her gun for the vampire Slip battles. <laughs> oh man, it's ridiculous. All right, man. Well, we're at a we're at an hour and twenty two minutes. Do uh, you have anything you want to wrap up other than uh, fuck Matt? Uh, no, I mean it's about seven o'clock. He has to wake up for his movie. He's he's not getting up. No, you know I what? really Here, want. Here's what I want to update do. the viewers someday of this uh, comeuppance. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna see what he's up to real quick. It's been, okay. Yeah, we got to give him a pity. See what he's up. It's to. been a while. It's been in like an hour and a half. Pretty much. It's, 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 it's been like an hour since I've called him. Oh, never mind. I guess Why you're not does calling. my phone do this? I don't get it. My phone does that from time to time. Let's see. Let's see if we can't wake him up. Oh, we got some Steve action over here. Steve action? On League of Legends. Oh. He loves that game. There's an Adventure Time League of Legends on the Cartoon Network website. I heard about that. I think if he answers now, I'm going to be more angry than if he does. I answer. would really be angry. I don't want him to wake up for this now. <laughs> Imagine that. He's still sleeping. She whiz. Oh, my God. All right. Well, um, I guess we'll sign off for the first one. It's probably going to take me a couple of days to edit and cut everything, but should be up. I think if we record on Thursday, I can get him up on Saturday for everybody. Sounds great. Um. This is funny looking down at my computer, and I only have uh, 286 hours left of disk space on my hard drive to record, Brian. We better watch it. Better <laughs> better cut out all the, uh, the extraneous crap and only keep the good stuff. I hear you. All right, guys. Well, um, if you have any suggestions for what you want to hear us ramble about next time outside of Matt being stupid. That's uh, definitely going to happen. Don't worry. Let us know. We're going to post it on our Facebooks. So we're going to post it on YouTube, all that good stuff. Um, so I'm Adam. I'm Brian, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.